Hey there guys and gals and welcome back to the D4A channel once again. Today I'm unboxing my bike carb jet kit from Six Sigma Racing. Where's the bike carb jet kit you say? Well, it all fits in this teeny tiny little bag. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to separate this little bag where the jets are from the papers. Now there's a lot of papers that came with the jet kit, I think about 10 pages, but we'll come back to these later in the video because they're really important and contain some pretty valuable information. But right now we are going to turn our attention to the jets themselves and the entire jet kit which is probably going to be the smallest thing I have ever unboxed on the D4A channel. So inside our little bag we have our entire kit and it consists of six little bags that I have divided into a total of five different categories. First up, it's this tiny little drill bit and I have classified it into the throttle response category. Why? Because you can use this little drill bit to drill an additional hole in the side of your bike carbs to improve your throttle response. Now, this is a pretty extreme mod and Six Sigma Racing recommends it only for racing use because it may you know, adversely affect your drivability and the behavior of your carbs at low and mid throttle positions. Next up, it's our tools category. And in our tools category, we have this tiny little thing, which is our D screw remover. Now this is used to remove a very particular type of screw that you can find on the bottom of some bike carbs, which is blocking access to your mixture adjustment screw. Now it's a D-shaped screw, so it's very hard to remove with anything other than a specialized tool like this. Next up we have our idle and the low throttle category, which is handled by our pilot jets. The pilot jets sit inside the fold bowl, which you can find at the bottom of your bike carbs. Now these are of course larger than the stock ones, so they are going to provide more fuel during idle and low throttle conditions. Next up we have our mid-range and our mid-range is handled by our adjusting shims and spacers and what they actually do is that they adjust the height of the needle that sits inside the slide. Now what this needle does is it dictates the amount of fuel coming through the main jet in the medium throttle range. The shims and spacers will raise the height of the needle and that's going to allow more fuel to come in through the main jet at all medium throttle positions. And finally, we have our main jets. Now, our main jets handle the upper throttle range and they handle everything from about 60% open throttle to fully open throttle. Just like the pilot jets, the main jets sit inside the fold bowl, which you can find at the bottom of your bike carbs. Now, this kit from Six Sigma Racing actually comes with two different main jet sizes, so you can correct your air fuel mixture in case it's too rich or too lean. So as you can see, the main task of the jet kit is to enable the carbs to pull in more fuel. Now this makes a lot of sense, especially in the case of a bike carb conversion on a car engine. Now the 4EG engine in my Toyota MR2 is a 1.6 liter car engine. This means that it's almost at three times bigger than the 600cc engine in the Honda CBR motorcycle that my carbs came from. So what that means is that because it's so much bigger, it's going to be pulling in a lot more air. And to compensate for this, the, the jets are going to be allowing the carbs to pull in more fuel. So that at the end, we are going to have a proper air-fuel mixture. Another thing that's really important to mention are the jet sizes. And you can find them written on the little bags of the jet kit and also on the jets themselves. Now these sizes are going to be your guides when replacing your jets. So for example, let's say that your idle is too lean. 
and you have a 45 sized pilot jet. That means that you need to buy a larger pilot jet to enable more fuel to come in you know, through the jet so your idle isn't going to be lean anymore. Uh, the jet uh, sizes come in increments of 5, so you have them going for example like 140, 145, 150, and you are going to be you know, changing them until you have a proper air fuel mixture. So this jet kit is actually my baseline. But this doesn't mean that all of these jets are going to be perfect for my bicarb conversion and I might end up replacing, you know, for example, the pilot jets or the main jets or maybe even buying more adjusting shims. But this kit comes, you know, with a lot of the things you're going to need. So you maybe just be, you know, buying additional one or two little parts. Now, how am I going to know whether I'm running rich or lean at different throttle positions? Well, an answer to that, of course, is my AMX series wideband gauge, which with its awesome responsiveness is going to allow me full insight into my, you know, air fuel mixture at all the different throttle positions. Okay, so that's it when it comes to the jet kit itself. Now, I want to talk about those papers that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Now, I know there's going to be someone out there who's going to say, dude, it's just a bunch of papers and it adds absolutely no value to this jet kit. Now, I beg to differ because honestly, this is a seriously useful bunch of papers. It actually has so many detailed and nice instructions that I think that someone who has, you know, very little or absolutely no experience with bicarbs, like myself, can actually install this jet kit. Now the nice thing about this bunch of papers is that they contain both general information as well as information specific to your particular bike carbs. So what's inside? Well inside we have some very nice and detailed carburetor cleaning instructions. Next up we have instructions on how to build a carburetor synchronization tool for as little as five bucks. Definitely useful. Now, there's some very specific information for my particular bike carbs, which are the Honda CBR600 F4 carbs, where I'm told exactly what needs to be done to make the most out of this uh, jet kit. Next, we have something really nice and useful, which is a parts diagram of my particular bike carbs, showing me where each of the different jets and other relevant parts are located on the bike carbs. After that, we have some detailed instructions on how to install a jet kit. Now, these are general, but honestly, most of the bike carbs are pretty much the same. So this, all of the information here, pertains, I think, to about 90% of bike carbs out there. After that, we have more general stuff, which is tuning tips for both, for both four and two stroke engines, as well as some troubleshooting, in, troubleshooting instructions. And finally, we have an ad for a microburst nitrous oxide kit made by Six Sigma Racing, which enables you to turn your bike, I guess, into a suicide machine for as little as 59.50. I didn't even know there's nitrous kits for bike carbs, for, I'm sorry, for motorcycles, and I guess you can buy this if you are insane and or have a death wish and or balls off. I think steel isn't enough, let's say, balls of titanium or something. This is really scary stuff, but I guess if you're an adrenaline junkie, why not? So definitely a very comprehensive and nice jet kit and a very useful set of instructions. But even though these are nice and useful, I myself am part of a generation that sucks at acquiring knowledge from written materials. I mean, I did make myself a big cup of coffee and I did try to read this, but I fell asleep like halfway through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a video about how to install this jet kit onto the bike carbs so I can spoon feed you the knowledge and information you need. So you guessed it, that's the next video coming up on the D4A channel and we are going to make a detailed tutorial about how to install the jet kit, you know, onto the bike carbs. So definitely stay tuned for that and watch that video. If you have any questions regarding the jet kit or the bike carbs or any of the other things I'm talking about recently, of course, you can hit me up in the comments section as always. 
So I guess that's pretty much it for today. Of course, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, don't forget to share, like, comment and subscribe. Uh, you can also ring the notifications bell if you do not want to miss any more videos coming from the D4A channel. So, as I said, that's it. Thanks a lot for watching again and see you soon on the D4A channel.